Our scripture today is from John 14, verse 27, uh, and the sermon title is The Gift of Peace. And uh, I'm going to read John 14, verse 27. It's on the PowerPoint for you this morning. This is Jesus speaking in the upper room to his disciples. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Why is my peace I leave with you? Think about this. This is moments before he would go to the cross. He could say anything that he wanted to his disciples. Here is the living Lord. And what does he want to leave before he goes to the cross? I leave my peace. I give it unto you. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you so very much for your presence and your peace. For your love that makes it all possible. And I pray that you would anoint my mind and my heart and my lips. That you would use me to speak your peace to your people here today. To bless each one with your peace. Through Jesus our Lord. I ask Amen. I want you to look at the major emphasis Some of us here, or I don't, but the family farm has a window. And when you get a good renter, that is good. They take care of your place. Well, here's what really came to me this week, is that God desires that his peace be a resident, a permanent resident in our hearts. Does that make sense? God wants. God desires. If you want to know God's heart, he desires that his peace be a constant resident in our inner person. Isn't that great to know? And I think when Jesus was standing there before the disciples, he says, peace I leave with you. And so the challenge today is what are the how-tos? What are the how-tos that, that we can have God's peace in our life through thick and thin? And what is it contingent on? What is it not contingent on? Uh, slide number one. Let's look at peace. Uh, if you want to look up a Bible dictionary or peace, and what does it mean? The Old Testament word is shalom. Shalom means it's freedom from disturbance. When God created, I always remember what Mark Yarbrough, the professor from Dallas Theological Seminary, in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, we have a picture of what God intended for mankind as he put him in this place of perfection and it's a place of peace. The two things that God intended when he put Adam and Eve in the garden was a place, I'm going to watch out and fall off this, plus there won't be perfection and peace here. If I fall, I'll be all over. It was perfection and peace. Can you imagine living in a place of perfection? We've never known perfection. But we can know peace. And what happened in the garden, you know as well as I do, that place of perfection, that place of peace, the two things that were ruling with Adam and Eve as God would come in the cool of the day and walk with them, and there would be this perfection, this peace, this fellowship, and then the serpent came and disrupted that with sin, and that's what blew it all apart. But God always has a plan to bring back the peace that he wants to give us. So this shalom is the absence of conflict, it is the freedom from disturbance, it's a subtleness deep within, and it's a Sabbath rest. Don't you just like it when you know, I don't have anything to do today. And there's that rest, that peace. As a pastor, I don't have that anyway. I have the peace and the rest, but I always know I've got to be thinking. One of the commentators says that Shalom is a blessed privilege. It's a state within the heart that has been subdued by Christ. It's a gift from God to every believer. Let's look at it. It's very interesting that when Paul starts each of his epistles, his letters 
letters to the churches, and I just put three there. I read from Corinthians this morning to open the service. But look how he addresses each of the churches there all through Asia Minor. To the Galatians, he says, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father. What's the source? Peace from who? God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Ephesians. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Philippians. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice something that's very interesting. Grace always precedes peace. There's no peace without grace. Grace brings us into that fellowship with God through Christ. It's undeserved. It's a free gift. And grace precedes peace. Does that make sense? We're going to see why this is important in the next. Because if there's no Jesus, if there's no faith in Christ, and no fellowship with God through Christ, then there's no peace. Because in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, Christ is our peace. Let's say that together. Christ is our peace. Let's do it again. Christ is our peace. Let's do it again. Christ is our peace. The Bible makes it clear. He himself is our peace. One commentator says this. He's the God of peace. He's the Lord of peace. That's what he comes to bring. He's the source and provider of peace. And I love that. I found it on the internet. No Jesus. N-O. No N-O peace. K-N-O. No Jesus. No peace. Isn't that great? No Jesus, no peace. And so he himself, Christ is our peace. If anything resonates in your mind and your heart today, Christ is our peace. Let's go to the next one, if you would. Number four. I believe. Get out, I have learned this from you. You boys said, don't let anybody steal your peace. I believe it's the greatest benefit that we have to be a Christian. That peace that passes all understanding. That's a gift from God. To have that peace that passes circumstances, situations. It's a peace that He leaves and He gives to us. He is the source and He desires for it to rule in our hearts. Slide number five. I want you to look on this because we're going to go through some scripture that this peace is not contingent. It's not contingent. On the circumstances. Oh, I'm going to have peace today because everything's going to go 100%. Hunky dory. Let me ask you. You ever had one of those days? No, not really. Sometimes I'm in bed before something goes wrong. No. This peace is contingent on simple faith in Christ. That's the good news. By faith. I can have faith. This is contingent. The peace of Christ. The peace of our Lord is contingent on my faith in Him. And what He has accomplished for me, He has made peace by the blood of His cross, by faith in Christ, and just walking with Him each day, and fellowship with Him, and just enjoying Him. This peace, I want to tell you. Back in August, I had a colonoscopy. I know I held up the jug here in church, and everybody laughed at me. Thanks a lot.
grandson, you've got a burden about a house bill, let your request be made to know to God. Lord, I'm struggling in this area. Let your request be made known to God. This has caused me great travail. Let your request be made known to God. And this peace, and the peace of God, which transcends, surpasses all understanding. Doesn't make sense, but you can have peace. And you trade it in for the prayer of the anxiety. Look what Jesus will do. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard two aspects of your life, mental and emotional. What usually goes off mentally and emotionally is when we get into Is that true? It is a man. Will guard your hearts and your minds to Christ. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. Slide number 11. Here's what God wants in our hearts. Let the peace of God, let the peace of Christ rule, dominate in your heart. Isn't that great? Let the peace, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it rule in your heart. Let it rule. Slide number 12. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Slide number 13. Here's the gift from Jesus. My peace. I live with you. My peace. I give unto you. Don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. My peace. Let's pray. I know I get a prayer request every now and then. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you desire for your peace to be in every heart through Christ our Lord. And to permeate our lives and our hearts and our situations. Lord, right now I just ask that you would let your peace be in every heart. Through Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, if there's any heart that's weighed down in life with situations or burdens or fears or anxieties, right now I'm just asking you, Lord, that you would just take those and that you would give your peace. And Lord, that you would work out those situations for each and every person or family. Let your peace rule through Christ. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Today as we stand and sing, this is a gift that God gives. And if you want prayer for any particular thing, we invite you to come this morning.
Kathy has asked to be prayed for today. I thought with Kathy, all that she's been going through with all her treatments and everything, and she's done so well. We've all been praying, but I thought it's a time to join together as a congregation. So if you feel comfortable joining your neighbor's hand, let's pray together in one accord. Let's lift our souls to it. Father, we just want to thank you so very much for the power of prayer coming together in one accord. In the name of Jesus. Father, we lift our sister Kathy up to you. We just thank you for the strength that you've given her to, to, to sustain her through all that she's been going through, with all the treatments and her ups and downs, physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, Lord, all aspects of her life. And we know that you've been carrying her as a wings of eagles. And we just ask that, Lord, that you would reach down and touch her. We do pray for healing for her in the name of Jesus. That you will strengthen her in every way and orchestrate your mercy and grace. And Lord, that she would just have a great testimony because she's been through a heck of a test. So Lord, just anoint her and bless her and use her. And thank you for Kathy. We're asking it humbly by faith. In the name that is above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to, for our message this morning, she can't help. She just lied down. <laughs> For our benediction, now may the God of peace, who brought up the Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever.